Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you about the fearful avoidant attachment style and why it is sometimes referred to as the disorganized attachment style and different sort of ingredients that can create fearful avoidant attachment because I've been getting a lot of really wonderful and insightful questions about this inside of the school. So I wanted to give you sort of a history and a background of how this can really come about so you can look at it and go, oh, okay, I'm definitely fearful avoidant. I noticed that some individuals struggle to tell, am I fearful avoidant or anxious preoccupied because sometimes they're fearful avoidant leaning anxious, right? Because it's sort of a spectrum. Um, so I'm going to give you some really solid points about this today and a couple of stories to represent what can create fearful avoidant attachment. Before I dive into that, we are still doing a sale to support our community right now. The coupon code is with you. It's 25% off of um, membership bundles. So three months, it's six months, etc. You can find the button for that in here. I'll put it on the video. And um, I'm also going to be a part of an amazing free summit with a whole bunch of different relationship coaches and experts this upcoming weekend on the 20. Let me just check if it's the 20th or 21st. I don't want to get my days mixed up yet. The 20th and the 21st um, in, in the afternoon on both days. And it'll be myself and seven other amazing speakers and coaches that will talk about all different things around relationships. It's free. And I'm going to put a link in the description box of this video below if you want to sign up. So um, let me talk about this with you for a moment. So first and foremost, fearful avoidant. What are the other two names for fearful avoidant? Disorganized attachment style and anxious avoidant. I, when I was doing my learning and my training in, in different attachment theory concepts, I learned to call the fearful avoidant the fearful avoidant. But to be quite honest, it's actually like the least sensible name of all three of them. Because anxious and avoidant is really explanatory, right? It's like you have the anxious side of the attachment spectrum and you have the avoidant side and you're sort of swinging back and forth. So I actually quite like that. Um, disorganized attachment, I like the most. Um, it's less, less self-explanatory, but it has deep roots. So why is the fearful avoidant sometimes referred to as the disorganized attachment style? Well, because the fearful avoidant basically doesn't have an attachment strategy that's organized. And what does this mean? Well, if you look at the dismissive avoidant, for example, what you see is that the dismissive avoidant has consistent emotional neglect. So their mind of a child, or if your attachment style is changing in your adult life because of a, a repetitive circumstance or relationship you're exposed to that can rewire your subconscious mind, Basically, there's order in the sense that there's certainty and consistency with the fact that you are going to be emotionally neglected. And so it allows the mind to go, okay, there's a cause and there's an effect. I'm emotionally neglected. It doesn't feel good. I don't want to trust that person. I can, I'm just going to learn how to self-soothe. And there's some degree of predictability. The anxious preoccupied, they learn to soothe through others and they learn that it doesn't feel good to be alone and they feel like they can only exclusively soothe through others. So their attachment strategy is to consistently try to seek out others and soothe through them. But there's some element of predictability in their caregivers in terms of when they're actually present with their caregivers, but either the juxtaposition of a mother and father, one being really warm and available, one being really cold, or just maybe both parents being really available but working a lot or life circumstances happening where there's an inconsistency creates the anxious. But at least that person learns, okay, I can rely on my caregivers while they're here, or I can rely on one of my caregivers consistently. So they build an attachment strategy. The fearful avoidant, they don't build an attachment strategy. They literally, their attachment strategy be, basically becomes hypervigilance. Why is this? Because usually the fearful avoidant comes from a house or a relationship where there's a lot of disorder, a lot of chaos, a lot of volatility. It can be that a parent is an addict. It can be that a parent is um, has a personality disorder. Um, is going through depression, anxiety, takes their anger out on their children a lot. Um, it can be that a parent is um, in a relationship with another parent where there's fighting, abuse, violence, a lot of verbal abuse, whatever it might be. But basically, this is what happens. The fearful avoidant finds no consistency in that. It's not like, oh, there's consistent emotional neglect, so I can just self-soothe. Or, oh, they're, he they're available when they're here, so I can soothe through them. It's like, I can't tell on any given day how this person's going to show up. They could be drunk or sober. They could be angry or not angry. They could be fighting or not fighting. And I'm going to share a story with you of, of a client and we'll call this client Jackson. And Jackson 
had a stepfather when his mother remarried who was always angry. And he just said he felt like he was constantly walking on eggshells. And so he would come home and he was like, oh, what kind of mood is my stepfather in? And he said his stepfather would yell at him for laughing. His stepfather would yell at him for, you know, spilling anything. He would flip out and scream and all sorts of things, throw things. So it, there was no like cause and effect. There's no, oh, if I'm late back from school, then my stepfather gets angry. So I know there's a cause for the anger and there's an effect for the anger. It's like, no, it's just based on my stepfather and whatever mood he's in. So there's no order to the attachment strategy, to the strategy that the individual uses to attach and get close to their caregivers. And this is why fearful avoidance are also called disorganized attachment style. And when we have um, a disorganized attachment style, literally the subconscious strategy to adapt to that basically becomes hypervigilance. That becomes the attachment strategy. It's like, let me be hyper aware of your mood, your body language, your posture, your tone of voice, any changes in patterns that I could see and let me assign meaning to it really quickly so I can best protect myself and adapt to those painful circumstances. And this is the essence of what fearful avoidant is. And this is why there's such a big trust wound for the fearful avoidant attachment style because they learned. It's not even like, it doesn't even have to be the fact that um, you know, some parent cheated or one parent left or one parent physically abused or verbally abused. It can just be that there's enough inconsistency that there's not an ability for the child to build trust to one or more caregivers. And so that's why the root and one of the most painful things for the fearful one, one of their biggest fears is if trust is broken, they feel like they don't even know how to handle the situation and how to deal with it because they can't really seem to feel like they make sense of caregiver bonding or in our adult lives, we replace our caregivers with our adult romantic relationships. So if the trust is broken in a bond, this is why fearful avoidance can be so sensitive and need to pull away so much and protect themselves because they really don't like that unpredictability. So I just wanted to touch on that there. Of course, we know some of the other core wounds for fearful avoidant are, you know, besides I can't trust or I will be betrayed or I am bad, I am unworthy, I am unsafe, I'm not enough, unseen, unheard, disrespected, trapped, helpless, powerless. These tend to be the core wounds for the FA. So I hope this is helpful. I just really wanted to shed some light there because I've had a lot of people reach out and say, I, don't, I can't tell if I'm fearful avoidant or anxious. And I think that's a really useful way of looking at it. Um, and you'll know that you're fearful avoidant as well if you have an avoidant side that comes into play, if you pull back. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you're getting a lot of value. And I will see you in the next video.